This is Dawn Sapp. I'm a reading intervention specialist at Blackshire Elementary School. And today's parent and family engagement table talk will focus on reading comprehension and how to best help your child at home. What is reading comprehension? Reading comprehension is the ability to process text, to understand its meaning, and to integrate that meaning with what the reader already knows. The focus of today's table talk is how to help your child improve his or her reading comprehension skills. Reading is more than just saying the words or getting from the beginning of the book to the end. To be successful readers, children need to be able to comprehend text. Research has shown that there are some strategies we can share with children as we read that will help them to gain more understanding. Here are some of those. Making connections, predicting, visualizing, questioning, inferring, and determining importance. Often one of the reasons our kids aren't willing to finish a book is because they say, it's boring, or I can't understand it. But perhaps one of the reasons our kids aren't into the book is because they aren't connecting properly to the text. When readers make connections to the text they read, they're more likely to understand what they read, remember what they read, and enjoy what they read. Making connections is a reading comprehension strategy that helps students find meaning in a text by connecting it to their background knowledge. There are three main ways that readers make connections to text. Text to text, text to self, and text to world. In a text to text connection, readers make connections between the text and themselves or their own life. In text to self, they make connections between the text and another text they previously read. And in text to world, they make connections between the text and what they know about the world around them. I have got a great story for you guys today. Storm at Cold Water Creek is the title of the book that we're gonna be reading today. All right, what do you notice is going on on the front cover of the book? It's a storm and I think a twister's You think a twister's coming, okay. Like a twister? A twister a is like a tornado. It's a mini tornado. A mini tornado. All right, can you think of a book that we've read recently that makes you think of this story? <gasps> the girl that had to go get go to the school. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's You're a, talking about camping? Camping at uh, school? Yeah. Why does it make you think of the book Camping at because School? Because it's going on. It's waiting. It's storming. Hmm? It's storming. There's a storm coming, just like in that book that we read the other day. The little girl and her dad had to what? What was that big word we talked about? Exca evacuate. Evacuate. They had to evacuate their house, the didn't they, because of the storm coming. that book, I wanted to say it, but I didn't remember the name. Right here? Oh, Wild Nature. Yeah, it also made me think about this book that we read the other day, too, about different types of storms and natural disasters. This one reminds yeah. me. Yeah, but I didn't even think about the other book that we read, Camping at School. Book, That's good. This book reminds me of the book that we wrote in first grade, and this. Yeah, it does. A little. I'm sorry. Yeah, a little girl um, had me go pick stuff, mm -hmm. go to the barn, get eggs, get strawberries, get tomatoes. Yeah, and she had to get strawberries for yeah. a pie and a twister cake bread. That's exactly right, yeah. Thunder Cake was mm -hmm. the name of that book. Yes, it does make me think of the book Thunder Cake. That's a good um, connection there. Why All right, the I, I want stop. you to think about a time that you have been in a storm and how you felt. Think about that for just a minute. Making predictions is a strategy in which readers use information from a text and their own personal experiences to anticipate what they're about to read or what might come next in the story. Before your child begins to read, you may want to discuss any unknown vocabulary words, establish a purpose for their reading, and help them make predictions for what they think may happen in the story. We make predictions all of the time. We predict what the traffic will be like on the way to work, what the weather will be like on a given day, and whether we realize it or not, we make predictions when we're reading. In fact, the ability to make logical predictions, whether they turn out to be true or not, is a great way to gauge reading comprehension in your own child. While reading a book, stop your child every once in a while to ask one of the following questions. 
What do you think is going to happen next? Or if it's a nonfiction or informational text, ask, this section is about blank. What do you predict you will learn? As we read page seven, I want you to think about what do you think is going to happen next? Make a prediction in your head. And then how do you think Rita is going to feel? She's been our main character in the story so far. Think about how she feels. Okay, what do you think is going to happen um, next? Another the storm is going to be. You think another storm is headed their way? You may be right. We'll find out if your prediction's right, Jaden. I think that she's upset that it's raining. Why do you think our main character Rita is upset? Because she has, this is her first time being outside without dust and stuff going on there, but out of nowhere it starts to have a storm. You're absolutely right. Visualizing is another reading comprehension strategy that good readers use. Visualizing refers to our ability to create pictures in our heads based on texts we read or words we hear. Readers create pictures in their minds as they read. If they aren't able to, comprehension is lost. Perhaps background knowledge isn't solid enough for the child to understand the text, or perhaps he or she needs to reread for understanding. You could have your child make stops while reading aloud to describe the pictures in their mind. They could even draw pictures for you of what they see. You could ask them questions such as, what do you picture as you read this passage? When reading this story, did you make pictures in your head? Or how did these pictures help you to understand the story better? I'm gonna read the next two pages. And I want you to tell me what you see as I read it. So everybody close your eyes. It says, Grandmother saw the storm first. She cried out a warning as she ran toward the house. Behind her, a wall of boiling dust moved toward the farm. By the time Grandmother reached the yard, the dust was thick and black. Rita couldn't see anything, but she could hear Grandmother choking and calling out to her. All right, open your eyes for a minute. All right, what kind of pictures did you get in your mind as I read that? I see you? a farm. Okay, you see the farm. I see there's a lot of dust blowing. Okay, a lot of dust and blowing around. That. Go ahead and read pages 12 and 13 to yourself. Questioning is when readers ask questions about a piece of text and author's meaning in order to find and gather information, to clarify, and to build comprehension. When readers question the text before, during, and after they read, they attend more closely to the text, clarify meaning, make predictions, and focus their attention on what's important. When reading with your child, you may want to ask the following questions. Before reading, ask what do you think will happen? Or during reading, who are the main characters? And what is the problem and solution in the story? And then after having read the book, ask your child, what did the author want you to learn or feel after reading this book? Was this a good title? Why or why not? I want you to read page two to yourself. And as you do, I want you to think about the setting of the story. And I also want you to think about who the main characters are in this story today. All right, go ahead and read page two to yourself. All right, after reading page two, what do we know about the setting of the story? Where is it taking place? Mama, they're at home. Okay, they're at home. Sunday, April 14th. And we know the exact date. Now, authors don't always give us that information, but in this story, we know the very date that this story is happening on. April 14th, 1935. What does that tell you when you read that date? Think about the year, 1935. It tells us that the story is not taking place when? At, Whenever. at this time, in current day, in right? right? In present in time. Right in the long time ago. Yeah, 1935 was a long time ago, long right? Long day of the week it was on. Sunday. It's on a Sunday. Who are our main characters so far? Ma Mama. Mama. Papa. 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 Help me. Grandmother. Julia. Julio. And Rita. Rita. Making an inference involves using what you know to make a guess about what you don't know or reading between the lines. More than simple prediction, inferring happens when readers can take what they know and what is written in the book to read between the lines. 
The ability to infer helps the reader to get the why of the story and to draw conclusions. You can help your child at home use inference by asking the following questions. Why did you think that would happen? Why do you think the character feels that way? And why did the character do that? Determining importance is the final strategy that we will discuss today. Readers need to be able to prioritize or determine the important information in a text as they read. Prioritizing is related to main idea and identifying themes. It's a critical skill for students as they encounter textbooks and nonfiction. Be sure your child pays close attention to first and last lines of a paragraph, titles, headings, captions, fonts, illustrations, and bold-faced print. Initiate discussion before reading by asking what your child knows about the topic and what he or she would like to learn. After reading, ask your child the following questions. What kind of message is the author sending? Or what is the main idea of the book or passage? From this story that we read today, what would be the author's purpose for writing this book for us? the author have written this book for us to read so that we could learn about what? Um, storm. What kind of storms? The dust, the, dust storm. the dust storms and how it affected people during this time, right? Because until today you guys did not know there was such a thing, did you? No. You never heard of these dust storms in the Midwest uh, in the 1930s. Weren't even born first. That's right. You weren't born when this took place. So that's why you, I'm sure that they wrote the story. <laughs> All right. Take your books, guys. Having your child read just 20 minutes per day will help to improve their communication, speaking, and listening, as well as literacy and language skills. It improves their comprehension, as well as their overall confidence in reading. Make reading a focus in your household. Schedule a time each day for your family to read. Let your child see you reading. And have you and your child read multiple types of literacy such as magazines, books, and newspapers. Reading a lot is the best thing that your child can do to build good comprehension. And as with any strategy, these comprehension strategies are just the beginning. The best thing you can do for your child is to continue practicing these skills and continue reading with them. As you practice these skills more and more, you're sure to see your child's reading comprehension improve.